Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Elmwood, Illinois, Elmwood High School, as the Macomb High Bombers are here to play the Elmwood Brimfield Trojans. I'm Dwayne Hewlin. Tegan Perry is alongside. John Burton is on the camera. And Arnold Brothers Heating and Cooling is presenting Bomber Sports on TSSR Game Time Live, presented by MDH. Is that enough? Okay, go get me a water, and you can keep the rest. A young man from Elmwood is going to get me a bottle of water. Got to love the Elm Elmwood fans. They're always <laughs> great. I gave him money to go get me a water. Oh, okay. It's only a dollar. Oh, okay. Perfect life. <laughs> I didn't give him money. What is going on? He might want a candy bar later. <laughs> so, you're welcome. Thank you. So, anyway, I just asked a fan to go get me a bottle of water, folks. That's what well, that was all about. Just as we were coming on, he was sitting here wearing a jersey. Uh, an Elmwood Brimfield jersey at that, and we are here. We're in a little different location. You can see the camera angles is a little low as the Bombers are on the field already. John is showing you the Trojans getting ready to come on the field as we are getting ready here from Elmwood High School, and we've talked about Let's welcome to the field, George. we've talked about uh, Tegan. Last week, we knew Farmington would want to throw. We were kind of surprised they didn't run more. They seemed to have success with that. They stayed away from it a lot more than we thought they would. A ton of players. It's homecoming here at Elmwood Brimfield, so a big game for them, but a drastic change in style that the Bombers are facing tonight. Yeah, uh, with Farmington last game, they were playing a lot more of a uh, passing offense, like you said. Normally, Farmington runs a lot more, but they passed the ball a couple of times there, and Macomb seemed to have their number for it. And then when it came to running as well, Macomb also had there. So, Farm, uh, Elmwood Brimfield's going to have to find a way to be able to get past Macomb's run defense, and if they do that, we're going to be in for a really good game today. There's Coach Tanner Horrell talking to his team before we get ready to go, counting up everybody that has to be out here for the special team kickoff. And Interesting to see what the Bombers do on kickoffs tonight. They onsided. They did their little pop tip kick to about 20 yards downfield, and then they kicked deep with Ian Case as well. Three different kickers doing three different things. And uh, the Bombers are going to receive first, so we won't get to see that until either the second half or until they score their first touchdown. But it will be kind of interesting to see what they hand, how they do the kickoffs there. Yeah, with Macomb, they seem to like do everything, like you said. And uh, normally they've been doing a lot of uh, short little squib kicks and little pop-ups all season because they think that's work that works very well. And if they think that it works well, they're going to do it. And that's the one thing about Macomb. When you, th uh, you may think that they should do something else, but you have a really smart coach in Tanner Horrell, and he knows what he's supposed to do to lead his team to victory. Well, I'll tell you what, it's uh, getting ready to go here, and – not only is it going to be drastic, not as much passing, it's going to be very tight offensive, defensive line sets for the Elmwood Brimfield Trojan, Trojans and full house backfields galore. It'll be inside, inside, out, inside, 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 out, a lot probably for these. Thank you, sir, for these uh, Trojans tonight. So the Bombers will want to score fast, and then the Trojans will probably want to eat the clock up, right? Yeah, the Trojans run a really uh, two clock offense, so they'll do three uh, yards in a cloud of dust, as we talked about earlier. So if they can get that to happen, then that's what they'll do all game. Well, we're going to see if they can control the clock in a way that Farmington was not able to do last week against the Bombers. So here we go. Bombers 5-0, and Elmwood Brimfield 4-1, and as you see on the screen, and getting ready to kick off for the Trojans. Looks like it's going to be number 32, Josiah Good, on to kick off for the Trojans. We are amongst the Trojan fans here, so kind of like I feel like we're at Rova again. That's the same kind of deal we were at Rova as the clock runs out finally. Both teams are on the field. Ready to go. John Burton on camera. He's ready to go. Tegan Perry on color. He's ready to go. I'm Dwayne Hewlett. Thanks for joining us here on TSSR Game Time Live presented by MDH as Arnold Brothers Heating and Cooling presents Bombers Sports tonight. We hope that you enjoy the coverage. Hopefully you're at Sports Corner at 124 and watching the game. If not, you're watching it wherever you're watching it from. We appreciate it very much. And it's going to be a short kick. Come up, kick, get it is 
Uh, I think that is I think Connor it, Bishop. It was Bishop, I think, wasn't it? I couldn't yeah. tell if it was number eight. Our angle is so low here, it's hard to say. It was Connor Bishop on the kick return. And he goes, well, I thought he was going to go back into the lineup, but he comes out. Jack Duncan is going to come over and get the play from Coach Horrell, and away we go Some here from Elmwood High School. Something about the kick return I noticed, JT Jeter has been injured the last couple of games, and they had Jaden Jones back at kickoff return, so they might be trying to ease up uh, JT a little bit today. And the handoff's going to go to Reiner off left side. He's got some running and rounds the corner, but he's going to be drugged down on the far side. We'll pull up the camera and see if I can see who was over there. Reiner gets a two-yard gain for the senior. And it's second and eight for the Bombers from their own 38-yard line. It's first and 10 from the 36. Duncan steps up, comes back, takes the, getting ready to take the snap here. He will. Handoff's going to go to Reiner. No. Is that Reiner? It's not Reiner, I don't believe, is it? I think it is. It is Reiner coming, throwing down in the pile late. Uh, I'll get a gain of four. It's going to be third and four. Uh, on that play, uh, Jack tried his hard count, and it seemed that uh, the Elmwood defense didn't jump offside, so it seems that we have a very disciplined defense on our hands if they're able to already counter Jack's hard count. Reiner to the left of Duncan this time. He's going to look right, throws into the flat. It's Langdon Allen for a sports corner first down. He'll go from the 42 into Elmwood territory. Picks it up to the Trojan 47. An 11-yard gain to Langdon Allen, a sports corner first down. Number 11, uh, Braden Holtzhouse will come off on the play. In motion goes Jones, and they're going to throw a flag. False start offense, a five-yard penalty on the Bombers. Brings up first and 15 back into Bomber territory now at the 48-yard line. I don't think we got who that was on, but it doesn't seem like any of the uh, linemen from McComb jumped off on that one. I think somebody must have been moving when Jaden Jones moved, I'm guessing. That's the only thing I can figure out, or they thought he moved towards the line of scrimmage before moving down the line of scrimmage. That's the only thing I can figure, because they threw it as soon as he moved. So first and 15 for the Bombers now, 48-yard line. Dropped it. Duncan. I'm not sure what Duncan it looked like he was trying to fake the toss that time, and he's going to lose another six yards on the play. I don't know. From my point of view, it seemed like that he didn't really get a good hand on the snap, and he kind of bobbled it a little bit and have it fall. And second and so second and 22, and uh, they don't make plays for this in the book, mm -hmm. so you take a couple downs to see what you can get here. And Reiner, Reiner's going to be on the run, and he's not going to gain much. Well, he breaks a couple tackles. He's going to go for a gain of three or four. Elmwood um, Brinfield's defense doing a really good job at solving McCombs offense. McCombs already made some penalties of their own, but it seems like Elmwood Brinfield has done what many other teams haven't and been able to capitalize off a real mistake from McCombs. Well, McCombs done it to themselves, a five-yard penalty and then a fumbled snap. I mean, Elmwood doesn't have anything to do with that. They stopped one play, but... Uh, it's now third and forever for the Bombers as they drop back to pass. Allen's open, and it's oh, into, into pick it off. And going back the other direction, it's going to be a pick six for Aiden Frail from about the 40-yard line. We'll call it a 60-yard interception return for a touchdown, and a flag is thrown late, and that might be on the Bombers as well as Bailey, or excuse me, Aiden Frail, number three, with 8.56 to go in the first quarter. The safety there read the cornerback, uh, the quarterback's eyes very well, and he knew he was going to throw to Allen, and he just ran up, picked that, and ran it all the other way. It Good play on the defender. And there is a penalty on the play, but it'll be after the play, I think. Unsportsmanlike. 
Not sure who they called it on. But it's a 8.56 to go. An interception. And a two-point conversion run is no good. And it's 6 nothing. Trojans here in the first quarter. We'll take a break and be back on TSSR Game Time Live presented by MDH. Just a minute. I chose the MDH OBGYN group uh, because I've heard wonderful things about Dr. Smith. Um, and upon entering the office, I, I really got along with everybody and got a warm feeling. The staff is warm and inviting and welcoming. It's a small community, so it's a really nice a hospital to have here in the rural area. I continue to choose MDH because of the relationships I have. I really enjoy everybody here. Dry needling is where you insert a filiform needle into a muscle, a tendon, a ligament, um, sometimes a bone, and it promotes blood flow and circulation so that it heals that particular painful area. Welcome back to Elmwood High School. It's an unsportsmanlike penalty on the Bombers. It'll be assessed on the kickoff. They're gonna be kicking from the Bomber 45 yard line. And fog is rolling in on the far side. You can see it on the camera there. I don't think that's smoke, is it? It's fog, isn't it? No, it's fog. It's really cool though. And there's a short kick, gonna be fielded by Bishop again. He's got some running room. Brings it upfield. He'll be across the 20 to about the 22-yard line. That's where the Bombers will take over. So it is first and 10 Bombers, down 22 after the pick six by the Trojans. And Duncan back in shotgun again. We'll see if they go right back to the pass here. They do not. They hand off to Reiner. He's got some running room this time. He's out across the 25, close to the 30-yard line. Seems like today they want to really rely on Reiner to start off the draw offense. Looks like a gain of five. He's got 15 on four carries. It's second down and a long five for McComb now. Be interesting to see. I think that's actually smoke. It's rolled from one end of the field to the other now. Uh, it's just so humid. There's Reiner off left side. He's going to cut it upfield. He's got some running room. A sports corner, first down and more. He's off the left side. He's across the 40 to the 45 yard line. An 18 yard gain unofficially. We'll see where they mark it. He's from the 27. It's an 18 yard gain for Reiner. A sports corner, first down. He's got 33 yards. On five carries does Max Reiner, and it has been a healthy dose of Reiner here early, and the Bombers trailing for the first time this season, 6 nothing after the pick six in the last series. Reiner now goes right side, cuts it upfield, puts his foot in the ground, sidesteps one, bounces off another, keeps his feet pumped, and he's got another sports corner first down and more as he's down near the 40-yard line, just across the 40 in Elmwood Brimfield territory, a gain of 15 on first down. It's a sports corner first down. And Reiner has got something going now for the Bombers. Yeah, it seems like what you said earlier, they want to do the inverse of what happened with Farmington. They don't want to really throw a lot today. They want to run the ball and beat uh, Elmwood at their own game. Lindsey May is in at the fullback spots. Jaden Jones is, no, that's Denzel Cochran. Denzel Cochran left side, and he goes around, bounces it outside. He's got speed. He's down the sideline. He can't break the last tackle, but it's going to be another sports corner first down from the 40 inside the 20, it would appear, near the 15. We'll see where they mark it at. This this Macomb RB room is very deadly. You have Max Reiner who can just run through someone, and then Denzel Cochran has the speed. 22-yard carry for Cochran. And then Denzel Cochran just has the speed to get past any defender on the field. A first down, a sports corner first down. Cochran with the run again. He goes right side this time, breaks a tackle. He's shifty and he's not real big, but he's going to have another sports corner first down. Five of them now for the Bombers, and they're down inside the 10. A gain of 15. Cochran's got 30 
six yards, 37 yards, excuse me. Yeah. Seems that McCombs decided that, you know what, we're going to let our running backs do the job first. Duncan now is going to hand off to Reiner up the middle. A Tom Conklin State Farm touchdown for Max Reiner, a four-yard touchdown run. And just like that, a little bombers give Elmwood Brimfield a dose of their own medicine as they run it down the field. A touchdown for the Bombers, and they have tied it at six. As Duncan now and his team going to go for two. He's going to hand off left side to Reiner. He's got some running room left side. He's going to walk into the end zone. A great cap block over there by Carter Hogue and others, and a two-point advantage for the Bombers as they get the two-point conversion, and with... 7.09 to go in quarter number one. The Bombers have taken an 8-6 to six lead over the Trojans. Seems that the Bombers really just forgot about last drive and chalked it up to be like, you know what, it's mistakes. We're going to make them up the start of the game. We forget about them. Let's go down, do the thing that we do best, and then they just proved it. Now Langdon Allen's going to come out to kick, and he might probably pooch, uh, either do one of those high-off kicks that you said or probably squib it to the side. This game being brought to you by Ron Elbiato Sales with locations in Macomb and Augusta. With 80 years of car sales experience, Ron Elbiato Sales is your home to, hometown go-to for your next car. In Macomb on East Jackson, stop in and talk to Justin, Jared, or Chris or visit www.lbsellscars.com to check out their inventory. In Arnold Brothers Heating and Cooling, since 1960, Arnold Brothers Heating and Cooling has provided the greater Macomb area with expert sales, service, and installation of quality home comfort systems. Call your local carrier dealer today at 309-833-2852 and find out how Arnold Brothers Heating and Cooling delivers 365 days of indoor comfort. Langdon Allen on to kick. Not really the pooch kick that we're used to. It might go out of bounds, and it does. Penalty marker is going to go. It should be first and 10 from the 35, I believe, for the Trojans after the kick went out of bounds. And I think he was trying that little loft-up pooch kick, but it didn't get under it enough. Yeah, uh, that's the sort of thing about those type of kicks. Sometimes they can go way too far up in the air, and then sometimes, like you've seen there, they just go a little bit too wide. That's why you got to find the perfect balance and p kick the ball at the right angle to be able to do that. And here we go. First offensive play. Can you believe that for Elmwood Brimfield? It goes right up the middle. And... Uh, See if we can figure out who the ball carrier is. They come out of the pile. Sloan Windish, the ball carrier. Sloan Windish, number 34, is a six foot 185 senior. We'll use John's camera work here to try to frail the intercepting return. He's going to go for a gain of a couple. It's going to bring up third down and four. Third and four for the Trojans, and right back to the line of scrimmage they go again. Handoff's going to go to number 48 this time, and he's going to be across the 45. It's Gavin Buell, the 40. And he'll have a first down, a gain of five, and it'll bring up first and ten for the Trojans at run, their 45-yard line. They're running so fast, I can't get the stats down. And it's going to go to number 48, Buell again, and he's going to be stacked up again. But he's going to go for three or four yards. If they can get three or four yards, they'll take it every time. It's a gain of four, and it's going to bring up second down and six. Back to the line of scrimmage they go again. No chance to sub, no chance to breathe. Handoff right up the middle again. And it's going to be another three or four yard gain again. First back through, Windish, the fullback. He's going to gain four. It's going to bring up third down and two. Didn't quite get enough to get the five-yard gain, but it's third and two, and right back to the line of scrimmage they go again. Handoff's going to go to Frail. He'll have a first down. Aiden Frail gets the six-yard gain. And it's a first and 10 at the 40-yard line of the Bombers now. Yep. Moving, moving, moving. Handoff's going to go to Frail again. I do believe. 
He'll go for a gain of two that time, second down and eight. Seems that this hurry up offense is really draining McComb right now. Yeah, hustling off the field for the Bombers there, number 57. That was Hunter Kendrick. And another carry. That's going to be Swindish. Sloan Windish goes for a gain of three. It's third and a long five for the Trojans. Definitely in four down territory here. This time it's going to be Buell. He's got some running room. He gets across the first down marker, I do believe. He'll go for a gain of six. And the first and ten for the Trojans. Already ten carries for this uh, offense right now. Excuse First and me, ten man. at the 29. Hand off that time, I believe, number seven, Bo Windish. He's going to gain five, and it's going to bring up second down and five. And a quarterback keeper this time goes nowhere. Hunter Kendrick and others were there. Ian Case there as well. S lost, uh, dropped for a loss, Oliver Hines. He's going to lose a yeah, two, third and seven. Loss of two. Longest third down play of the game thus far. Hines back up there under center. Going to hand off to Frail. He's got a little bit of a crease. Not going to go very far. Hunter Kendrick's there again. Aiden Frail. Ethan Ladd and Ian Case all there on the stop. It's going to bring up fourth and three after a gain of three. Expect McComb to stuff the line of scrimmage right here. Oh. Handoff's going to go this time to Bo Windish, and he's going to get stopped short of the first down, I believe. He's close. He goes for a game, but I believe he's short. And it's a turnover on downs. Windish gets a gain of about two. He needed three. Actually, he gained about two and a half. He needed three. It's a turnover on downs. First and ten bombers at their own 20-yard line. We talked about how they're going to run this game. 13 carries on that just one drive. And 3.15 remaining here in the first quarter. The bombers lead eight to six. They have the ball for the third time. First Series resulted in a turnover that went a pick six, running into the game late for the Bombers. was, And there goes Cochran off left side. He'll go for a gain. See where they mark. It looks like a gain of five from where we're at, but we'll wait and see. Officials standing right about the 25-yard line. Like we said earlier, Denzel's just so shifty. He can seem like a two-yard gain and then suddenly make it a five, six, seven-yard gain. He's just that good at what he does. He's got 42 yards on three carries now. Duncan going to pitch it to Jones. Jones going to cut it upfield. Breaks it back left side. He can't break the tackle, though. Number 23, that's Tyler Sheps on the stop, and he made might have been – Tegan, a touchdown saving tackle. Yeah. A two yard gain, third and three for the Bombers. Yeah, they seem to they seem to like doing Jaden Jones out in those uh, little pitch sweeps there, so we might see that a little bit more during the game. Jack with the hard count, don't get it. Getting two setbacks. And that's gonna go to Reiner. He's got a sports corner first down and more. He's out near the 40, breaks another tackle. The ball loose. The ball got out. And the Trojans get the football. He went for a gain of, he went for a gain, no, he didn't go. He went for a gain of 10, but then he fumbled it. He's got 58 yards, but he fumble. And that defense right now, they're probably a little bit drained after just being back out there. So we're going to have to see how their defense does here. It's two turnovers for the Bombers now. And here comes Frail in motion, and he gets stacked up in the backfield. First person there was Lindsey May. He got a handful of jersey, 
And it's no gain on the play, second down and 10. One thirty-eight clock running here in quarter number one. Bombers lead by two, and it's going to be Bo Windish on to carry, and he gets, gets some running room. He brings it left side. He breaks one tackle, and finally going to be brought down by Braden Holdhouse, but a flag comes down. I believe it's going to be a face mask or a horse collar. That was it good. is a face mask. Yeah. A face masking penalty going to be added on. So from the 45 of the Bombers, it's going to go 30-20 to the 14. So a 31-yard run and a 10-yard penalty. Actually, a half the distance to the goal, but they're giving it. McComb making some mistakes early on that we haven't really seen from them so far. The bombers get another penalty. 10 yards, they got 15 yards in penalties now. Bo Windish again, and he's got some running room up the middle. First and goal at the five, he's down inside the five now, close to the goal line, looks like a gain of three. It's gonna bring up second and goal at the two for the Trojans. Yeah, I'll give him two, second goal from the three. This Macomb defensive line has to start, stop the run up the middle because they've been getting three yards, four yards on them so far and they they can't allow that if they want to be Elmer. Hines is going to hand off inside Frail, and he's going to go in for a three-yard touchdown run. A three-yard touchdown run for the Trojans, Aiden Frail. It's his second touchdown of the day, actually. 41.9 seconds remaining. Three-yard run for Aiden Frail. See what they do here. Big two point conversion for the Bombers. Handoff's going to go to Frail again. And he's in this time. A two point conversion run for Frail is good. It's 14 to 8. So the Bombers trail again, 14 to eight here from Elmwood High School. This game being brought to you by the Old Dairy located 210 South Lafayette Street in Macomb. Serving soup, salad, sandwiches, homemade dessert, blue bunny ice cream, and a full service coffee bar to boot. Breakfast served all day and free Wi-Fi. Visit them online at www.olddairymacomb.com. Call 309-837-6700 for your takeout. Also, Sports Corner at 124, Macomb's original local sports bar is, is Sports Corner at 124. With a focus on local sports, catch WIU games and all the area TSSR game time live broadcasts at Sports Corner at 124. All while you're enjoying your favorite cold drink and some of the best food in West Central Illinois. Stop in and say hi at 124 North Randolph Street in Macomb. That's actually the Bombers' third penalty. They had a 15-yard unsportsmanlike as well. So that's 30 yards in penalties. Today, McCombs going to have to win on that defensive line. There's the kickoff. Nice deep kick. Goes off the fingers. Bishop's going to track it down. He tried to catch it over the shoulder. He breaks one tackle, but he's going to get bottled up deep in Bomber territory about the 10-yard line. That's where this drive will start, just outside the 10. First and 10 Bombers, and the one drive looked really good, but a couple turnovers and a few penalties, and the Bombers are struggling to be effective here in the long haul thus far in this contest. Yeah, and we talked about this earlier too. Like Elmwood Brimfield is the Illinois football team. They're, they play good run game. They play good defense. They're always going to be good. Jaden Jones on the pitch again. He breaks a tackle and then gets bottled up, gets thrown to the ground. He does go for a short gain, a gain of one. It is a pass. Second down and nine for the Bombers. 
You gotta come up with and something. that'll be the end of the first quarter of play. We'll take a break as well as Arnold Brothers Heating and Cooling is bringing Bomber Sports to TSSR Game Time Live presented by MDH. We'll be back in just a few seconds. MDH has committed to having a top-notch OB-GYN unit. The new facility, the Dolores Cater Schweitzer Women's Center, this is a quality facility that the patients need to match the quality of care. And then we also have a new clinic, which is state-of-the-art. And here at McDonough, we have a team. And everybody feels like they're a part of the successes that we have. We have a strong team in our office and in labor and delivery. You will get the best care at McDonough District. Welcome back to Elmwood Brimfield High School. The teams take the long walk back to the other end of the field now as they switch sides and flip the script, so to speak. And Tegan, this is the first time the Bombers have faced a little adversity. You're gonna see what the Bomber football squad is made of. Yeah, uh, they need to step up and they need to prove that they are a good round football team. Uh, we've seen in the past that they haven't played full games, and right now it hasn't seemed like they've been playing a full game at all. They need to start getting back into the rhythm of the offense and defense. Jack back with the snap. He's throwing right to JT Jeter, I think, for a sports corner first down. See where they mark it down at. He was from the 10. 14 yard gain to Jeter. Sports corner first down as Tegan said. And that doubles the yardage thus far for Jack Duncan. He's four for five for 28 yards and a pick six. Up the middle the handoff goes again. Still pushing and moving. And that's Reiner again. They go for a gain of five, second down and five for the Bombers. Yeah, something in this game that's going to happen, both teams are just going to have to push the running back back or forward because that's the only way that you're going to get yards. The offensive line has to play well and has to open up holes for that running back right there because you have an amazing running back room, but you can't just let them get swarmed by a bunch of defenders. Duncan again, trying to get the hard count. Now he's going to hand it. Nope, fake to Reiner, goes downfield. Jeter's there, going up and makes the catch. JT Jeter again, and see where they mark it. From the 30-yard line into Elmwood Brimfield territory, 20, 25, 26 yards. A sports corner first down on the catch, and a great diving catch by JT Jeter. He's got 40 yards on two catches now. 54 yards receive, or passing for Duncan now. He's going to go to Cochran this time. Near side, he breaks it upfield, plants the field. He's got some running room. He's across the 30, into the 25, near the 20-yard line. He's brought down by Frail. But, man, he planted that foot tagging, and he goes for a gain of at least 20. We'll see where they mark it at. 23, a gain of 21 for Cochran. I know we talked about his speed a lot, but his footwork is impeccable. He probably has some of the best footwork on this team right next to Langdon Allen as well. Duncan back under center. Cochran still the deep setback. Lindsey Mays there as well. It's going to go to Cochran right side this time. He cuts it back upfield into the interior of the line that time and goes for a nice gain. From the 23 down near the 15. We'll see where they actually mark it at. It is a gain of, we'll give him seven. Bring up second down and three. Second and three. Seems that despite the first half, uh, I mean the first quarter uh, adversities, it seems like they're coming off strong in the second quarter. And I was going to go to Reiner this time. He bounces it off left side, and he's going to go in for the Tom Conklin State Farm touchdown. A 16-yard touchdown run for the Bombers, and they tie it up at 14. Yeah. Yeah. So far, adversity. They've seemed to overconquer it, but you have to put out that defense out there and make adjustments to that line. Otherwise, Elmwood Brimfield is still going to continue to run over because that's what they do best. 
And uh, Reiner again on the handoff. He goes right up the middle, and he's going to go in for the two-point conversion run. 16-14, Bombers with the lead here from Elmwood High School. And this has got the feeling that it may just go back and forth just like that. Tom Conklin State Farm touchdown. Tom Conklin State Farm face-to-face -face, over the phone by email or by text. You choose how you do business with Tom Conklin State Farm Macomb. You can reach out to them at 309-837-1200 or visit them online at www.macombsf.com. Better yet, stop in and get a quote today at 1221 West Jackson Street in Macomb. And M&B Furniture, Bushnell's only furniture store. M&B Furniture is a mainstay in the community and offers free delivery within 40 miles. For everything you need to furnish your new home or replenish an old one, stop and see the fine folks at 481 West Main Street or find them on Facebook, Instagram, or on the web at www.mnbfurnitureinc.com. You can also call 309-772-2111. See what... Is that Ian Case or Langdon Allen on I, the kickoff? I think that is... It think, is Langdon Allen, I just heard him say. See what Langdon Allen does this time. Langdon Allen short. Gonna pooch it now in the middle of the kid, but it's going to bounce. It's oh. going to stay inbounds. Frail's going to pick it up. Uh -oh. He's got some running room. Bounces off one tackle, bounces off another. He's got some blockers down the left side. Aiden Frail's going to make a nice return out of a kick that rolled deep into territory. And it's going to be about the 29 or 30-yard line here. And he picked that up about the five, I think, Tegan. And he had some blockers. He just couldn't quite turn the corner. It's first and 10 Trojans at the 30-yard line. Yeah, I mean, we've said his name a lot today, Aiden Frail. Like, he's been lights out so far in this first half, and I'm excited to see what else he has on the table. But yeah. There's a handoff up the middle. Not much there that time. There you go. Number 24, Lane Durst, the ball carrier. No gain, second down and 10 seems that, for the uh, Trojans. Seems that uh, Hunter Kendrick chopped into one of the offensive linemen and caused the running back to stumble behind him there. And a pitch this time is going to go to Frail. He's going to go across the 35. That's technically probably a pass, but we'll call it a run. A gain of six, third down and four. At the 36-yard line. 8.45 remaining in the first half. This is a much quicker style of football game than we've been used to this year. Frail again on the handoff. Not much doing this time. He's going to bring up a fourth down. A gain of about one. Yeah, they might see where they mark it. The down markers uh -oh. from where the judge. Fourth and two. A couple players getting up slow. Lindsey May, Ian Case. It's going to be interesting to see what they do here. It's only two yards, and their fourth, offense has been doing Fourth and two, and they're at least going to make it look like they're punting. Yeah. I think I would, uh, I would watch a fake here. Yeah. I think it got McComb last week on the fake. And, and a penalty. There's a penalty flag on the play. It's a false start on the Trojans. First penalty of the night, right, against the Trojans? Yeah, that's their first mistake so far. but Kind of a big one, but they were actually going to punt it, so I guess it really doesn't make a whole lot of difference, except you got to punt now yeah. from a little farther back. Yeah. Honestly, that gives uh, Elmwood Brimfield a little bit more advantage because it gives them more room to work with downfield because now they can boot it as far as they want. Here's the kick, nearly blocked. Windish with the kick. It's going to get a good Trojans roll all the way down to about the 30-yard line. The announcer's got a better angle than us. He says it's the 32. So it'll be first and 10 bombers at about their own 32-yard line on the change of possession. So this is a big series for the bombers because it's back on serve, right? The bombers got the ball first. Gave up the pick six. They need to get this score here so that they can be back on serve because the Trojans will get the ball first in the second half. Yeah, I mean, with McComb, 
they ha they do what they do best, capitalize off other people's misfortunes. But Cochran a little shimmy and a shake, but couldn't uh, get away from. Let's see what number that is. Trying to wait for him to walk away. That was number eight, Jacob Avery on the stop. He's going to go for a gain of four is Cochran. That's his shortest run of the night. He's got 74 yards on six carries. Duncan now back in the shotgun. Going to hand off this time right side to Reiner. He's going to keep his feet pumping, and he's going to be out for a sports corner first down from the 36. An eight-yard gain for Max Reiner. And a sports corner first down for the Bombers. He's got 87 yards on 10 carries. Yeah. Like I said, this running back room is stacked. No matter who you put back there, they're going to do their best and get five, seven, nine yards. And it's going to go to Reiner again. Right side. Cuts it upfield. Nice gain again. Going to be short of the first down, but it's going to be a gain of eight or nine. We'll see where they mark it. Rick up second down and short for the Bombers. So they move it back a little bit. A gain of should I give him nine or eight? Uh, I think that's nine. Okay, we'll give him nine. I'll Second down and one. I'll say this. This is definitely a, a Coach Sears type football game right here. <laughs> yes, it is. And I was going to go Cochran this time. He's hitting the backfield. Big stop there for Elmwood Brimfield on the stop. Number 34, Stone Windish. Also is Bo Windish in there on the stop. He's going to bring up third down and four, a loss of three for Cochran. Third down and four bombers at just about the 50 yard line. Actually, the ball is on the 50. It's in neutral territory at the moment. Duncan gonna take the snap. 5.45 remaining in the first half. They might try a little screen here. Or, nope, they run. Reiner stutters, goes forward, and he's gonna have a sports corner first down. A gain of five for Max Reiner. He's got 12 carries and just breaks the 100 yard mark. 101 yards on 12 carries. And the Bombers get a sports corner first down, and it's first and 10 at the 45 yard line of the Trojans. It's a Go ahead. Oh, sorry, I was going to say, I'm a bit surprised that they didn't run the screen because they like to do that in that formation. But Pass to the flat to Langdon Allen. He stutters back. He's going to be close to a first down. He'll have a sports corner first down from the 45 to the 35. A 10-yard completion to Langdon Allen. A sport corner, sports corner first down for the Bombers. And Langdon Allen gets his second catch. Two for 21 yards for Langdon Allen now. Hmm. What are they... How are they? That second down, yeah, they're going to bring the chains over. I can see where they might think it's not, but where they got the marker, that's on one side of the line and the ball's on the other, so we know that's not right. I but they're going to measure it. It's close. I think it's going to be a first down for McComb. I, I think you're right. I do think you're right. It, it's, 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 it's kind of fun to watch this game, though, because of the drastic style difference, right? Because the uh, – Bombers style is much more open and running and it's more pound, pound, pound for the Trojans. Yeah, I mean with Bombers, they're a, thra they're a thrash and run defense. Like they're going to thrash it through the air and then run it through the defense. Like there's nothing on this Bomber offense that's bad at all. And that's something that Elmwood Brimfield has to understand. And so far with it being this close, they've Kind of cap, they kind of really done well against the Macomb offense, but we'll, we'll just have to see how the rest of the game turns out. Here's Duncan going to try it again. First and ten, Bombers at the 35-yard line, handoff right up the middle. That's a nice. Go ahead. I was going to say that was a nice tackle by the Elmwood Brimfield uh, uh, linebacker. He got low, wrapped his arm around his hips, and. Drove him down. Swindish on the tackle. Gain of two. He's going to have the 16 carries I have on my stat sheet in the first half at this rate. Duncan now into the flat again to Langdon Allen. He's going to go for a sports corner first down and be pushed out of bounds. Clock's going to stop with 435 remaining from the 33. We'll see where they mark it. Looks like it's going to be at the 19. So a 14-yard completion. And a sports corner first down. 
home, has a little bit of time to recuperate, try to calm down a little bit and focus on what play they want to run. Duncan now is going to hand out to Cochran right side. He's got a big avenue to run, but a great tackle, and a flag is going to come down. Frail on the tackle. He made a diving stop. I think it's going to be a holding penalty. It is a holding penalty against the Bombers. We'll see where they mark it from. It was at the 19-yard line. I think Cochran will get some credit for some yardage here. We'll see where they mark it. It's going to be a 10-yard penalty. Looks like he's going to get a gain of – so he's going to get a gain of four and a penalty for 10 yards. 40 yards in penalties here in the first half. 75 yards rushing, but it's going to bring up first down and 16 for the Bombers. That's a spot of foul penalty in case you're wondering how that happens. Cochran now is going to run around the left side, and he's going to be dragged down from behind. Swindish again on the stop. Swindish has been playing very well. Sloan Windish is a name we called early, and we've called a lot on defense now. Yeah, I mean. A gain I'm of one. Him and his brother have been doing really well this game, Bo and Sloan. May again, deep set back this time is Reiner. Duncan, hand off to Reiner. Finds, hesitates, finds some running room. He's down inside the 10, close to the five. A sports corner first down for the bomber. He might be inside the five. We'll see where they mark it at. No, if you're McComb. Yeah, he's down inside. From the 24, actually from the 23, a 22-yard gain. It's first and goal. Bombers on a sports corner first down. I think they're going to try to drain out as much clock as possible now to make sure that Elmwood doesn't get that to make sure Elmwood only gets the ball with one minute left. Yeah, well, they're going to use, they're going to take as much time as they can here on this play. And if they don't get in, they'll take as much time as they can on the next one. Handoff's going to go to Reiner. Reiner's oh. close to the first, toast to the touchdown. He's held up, held up. He's going to keep moving. He sticks the ball out, and he's in for a touchdown. A two-yard touchdown run for Max Reiner. And the Bombers have opened up an eight-point advantage. Ethan Ladd comes off with his helmet off. I think him and another Elmwood Brimfield person got at it a little bit there. <laughs> Those mean linemen, when you get in the game like this, they, they hate each other. They hate each other with a passion. Two-point conversion coming here. Max Reiner, another two-point two conversion run. He's got three of them now. It's 24-14, and that's a big two-point conversion run for the Bombers as that gets them two scores ahead with 3.08 remaining in the first half. They'll be kicking back to the Well, now if you're Elmwood, you got to open up your playbook a little bit. Those runs aren't going to be able to get you down the field fast enough. You got to potentially maybe throw a ball or two. And that's where McComb will probably capitalize off them. They'll probably try running off, but they can only do so much. Seems that Langdon Allen will be back to kick again. He might try another one of those little pooch punts that he's been doing lately, but he might try to squib it. That last kick did exactly what they wanted it to. The coverage just didn't get down there. It almost went a little too far. It outkicked out the coverage to some extent. Yeah, sometimes that just happens because people don't think that the person's going to get the ball, but whenever you're on kickoff, you have to just stay to your assignment no matter what. Uh-oh. It's going to be a pooch. It's going to be picked by Epback this time and bouncing off a couple tackles on the return and still struggling to find some yardage. Number two, Bailey Elwell picks the kick up again, and the ball came out late, but they're going to say it's Elmwood Brimfield football. 
Bombers pointing, wanting the football, but no such luck. First and 10 at the 40-yard line for the Trojans with three minutes remaining here in the first half. And I thought I put the second quarter button earlier, folks. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. Handoff to number it's three. It's going to be Frail. And he's going to go for a first down run. Still pumping his feet. And they finally blow the whistle. It's going to be a gain of 11. And a first down into Bomber territory at the 49-yard line. Yeah, just trying to drain this defense as much as possible. And it's been working so far. And again, up the middle with the run. 2.38 remaining. Buell on the carry for number 48 on the carry for the Trojans. And right back to the line of scrimmage with 2.25 remaining. Handoff's going to go to Swindish this time. Almost no gain. And Max Reiner and friends are there. Sloan Windish. And Lindsey May and Hunter Kendrick all there on the stop. A gain of one. Bring up third down and four for the Trojans. Two minutes remaining in the first half. And a timeout's going to be called by the Trojans. We'll take one as well and be back here on TSSR Game Time Live presented by MDH in just a couple seconds. I chose physical therapy because I knew I wanted to be in the healthcare field. Um, I wanted to be able to help patients in some way re uh, related to uh, more in depth. We get to know our patients and that's really uh, what kind of sets us apart. And we're back here as you see the Bombers on screen talking about what the Trojans may be trying to do here. There's a youngster falls right in front of us but gathered caught by an unsuspecting fan. Third down in a, a long four, short five, and two minutes to go or a minute 57 remaining technically. You wonder why they take a timeout here. It's two downs to get a first down. Uh, you're not going to punt in this situation probably, so you try to make something happen. If you, if you lose yards or something here, you use as much clock as you can. If not, you, you get your first down and you've saved a little time. Yep. At least that's, that's my take on it anyway. We'll see what they end up doing here. But it's 24-14. Bombers with the lead as we approach halftime here. Under two minutes to go in the second quarter. Handout's going to go to Frail again, and he's going to be close to a first down. It's going to be fourth down and one, a gain of four. Fourth and one. 145 remaining now. Now, if you're McCombs defense, you just got to stuff the middle of the line. You, there's, They're going to do that no matter what. Just yeah, this is a great spot, though, to go outside. They haven't done it all day. And Buell on the carry. He'll have the first down. Clock will stop. A gain of three. It'll bring up first and ten at about the 37-yard line, give or take a yard here, for the Trojans. And they're going to be right back to the line of scrimmage. And they started the clock. They should have stopped that clock, but they started it pretty quickly. That's a home, that's the kind of home cooking you don't want. That back to pass, right side it comes to Frail, and he's going to go for a short game. Aiden Frail catches the first pass attempt of the night for the Trojans. It's going to be a gain of two, second down and eight. One minute remaining in the first half. Trojans do get the ball first in the second half. Handoff's going to go to Frail around left side this time. He's going to try to get out of bounds, and he will. He gets plastered out of bounds over there by Braden Holdhouse. Oh, they're saying running clock. He fell out inbounds. He was down inbounds. I thought he got out of bounds. And a timeout's going to be called by the Trojans. 41.4 seconds remaining, and it's going to bring third down and three after a gain of five on the carry by Frail that time. 
tell you this game is being brought to you tonight by Community News Brief. For all your local news, subscribe to the Community News Brief weekly edition mailed directly to your home every Friday as an option. You can also receive Monday and Wednesday editions by email. All this for only $42 per year or $38 per year if you're 65 or older. Single copies can be purchased at select locations in Bushnell, Colchester, Blandonsville, and, of course, Macomb. And Good Hope Gardens, Good Hope Gardens located at 445 East Main Street in Good Hope, just east of the North Elementary School, open April through October. They're closed today because West Prairie played in the state junior high baseball tournament. I did not see a score on that. We uh, wanted to go try to cover that, just did not have enough staff to get there today. Currently, they have pumpkins and other fall goodies at Good Hope Gardens. Grover and Mary Jo DeCounter and family invite you to Good Hope Gardens. Come see where it's grown. So third down and three at the 35 for the Trojans. 41.4 seconds left. They have one timeout. Buell's got the first down and more. The clock will stop from the 35. He's down inside the 30, it would appear. Gain about three there? No. Gain of about eight, actually. Oh. And here's going to roll left is Hines. He's going to go downfield. Bombers are there for an interception. It's Jaden Jones. He's going to break it, break one tackle, and he's going to get brought down by Windish. 21.6 seconds as Jaden Jones gets the interception for the Bombers and quashes the scoring attempt for the Trojans. And he was just back there playing center field on a ball that was lofted deep downfield. Yeah, I mean, still, it's the right call by Elmwood Brimfield. You're not expecting them to cover that deep, but it just seems that a lot of the cornerbacks read the quarterback's eyes and just swarmed right to the ball. Can't really do much there. Yeah, Bombers had a lot of white jerseys back there. Thing is, with 21.6 seconds left, the Bombers could make something happen here. Duncan is taking the shotgun snap. He's going to hand off to Reiner, and he's going to bounce it outside. He's got some running room, shakes off inside, spins around, still on his feet. He's going to go out across the 15-yard line. It's going to be a sports corner first down with 9.9 .9 seconds left and a gain of 11 for actually a gain of 12 they'll give him. And that will give him 16 carries in the half for 139 yards. And that will be the end of the first half of play. The Bombers are going to lead at the end of two quarters, 24-14. And we'll take a break here on TSSR Game Time Live presented by MDH, and we'll be back in just a couple minutes. I went through MDH when we were trying to get pregnant. We were struggling the first year, and then when we got pregnant, I stayed at MDH and through labor and now for pediatrics. My experience was nothing short of phenomenal. I was met with amazing staff members who helped me through concerns that I had when she was first born, helping me learn how to be a new mom. It was really reassuring and comforting knowing that I had so much support and kindness around me. My entire pregnancy at MDH was amazing. I chose physical therapy because I knew I wanted to be in the healthcare field. Um, I wanted to be able to help patients in some way re uh, related to uh, more in depth, we get to know our patients, and that's really uh, what kind of sets us apart. MDH has committed to having a top-notch OB-GYN unit. The new facility, the Dolores Cater Schweitzer Women's Center, this is a quality facility that the patients need to match the quality of care. And then we also have a new clinic, which is state-of-the-art. And here at McDonough, we have a team, and everybody feels like they're a part of the successes that we have. We have a strong team in our office and in labor and delivery. You will get the best care at McDonough District. I went through MDH when we were trying to get pregnant. We were struggling the first year, and then when we got pregnant, I stayed at MDH and through labor and now for pediatrics. My experience was nothing short of phenomenal. I met, was met with amazing staff members who helped me through concerns that I had when she was first born, helping me learn how to be a new mom. It was really reassuring and comforting knowing that I had so much support and kindness around me. My entire pregnancy at MDH was amazing. Dry needling is where you insert a filiform needle into a muscle, a tendon, a ligament, um, sometimes a bone, and it promotes blood flow and circulation so that it heals that particular painful area. 
Welcome back to Elmwood High School as they are announcing the homecoming court. And they'll walk out slowly. We've got a 12 and a half minutes and then a three minute warm up period as well. And Tegan, it's, it's kind of interesting to me anyway to see how this game has progressed from a Bombers standpoint. You know, they, they've been known for a passing team and they've thrown a little bit. I mean, Duncan is seven for eight for 78 yards. He does have the pick six that went for a 60 yard touchdown. But it's been a bomber rushing attack that we hadn't really seen an emphasis on all season long. Max Reiner unofficially 16 carries for 139 yards. And Denzel Cochran has nine carries for 76 yards. Very successful running the football for the Bombers, and it is, uh, what would that be? It'd be 26 or 25 carries for 100 and, or 215 yards, and you take six off on a Duncan sack. So 215, 209 yards rushing on 26 carries isn't too bad. Yeah, that is that is numbers that you want to see. This, that's the numbers we thought Elmwood Brimfield was going to be putting up in the first half, but seems that Macomb really had an answer to Elmwood Brimfield's rushing attack later on, but they still need to keep on and make adjustments because even then they were still getting three, four yards off the carry. Yeah, their first play was, was uh, or their first drive went 13 plays, right, but it didn't result in any points. Yeah. And then a couple big plays got them into the end zone after another bomber turnover. So both touchdowns for the Trojans have resulted from bombers turnovers. Yeah, and that's something that we haven't really seen a lot from other teams, and that's something that McCombs gonna have to look at. They can't let other teams capitalize off their mistakes. And during the Farmington game, they made a, they played a very well game, but there were still one or two mistakes. And that's the same thing with South Fulton. Um, uh, Rushville. In. Rushville. Uh, they made early mistakes on, but they didn't capitalize off it. Elmwood and Brimfield was different. They struck back immediately, and that's something that Macomb really didn't face. And for a moment, it seemed like the Macomb team looked kind of down and out of a lot of morale, but they seemed to pick it up in the second half. But a part of that is just due to how well they're coached right now because you have Steve Horrell back there uh, calling a lot of really great offensive plays, and then Dave Wilson as uh, the defense coordinator who uh, just knows every position on the defense well, and not many not many defensive coordinators can do that as well as he does. As the pep band comes on the field now, we'll, take, we'll step aside for a couple seconds and be back after another word from the sponsors here at the half it's 24 14 bombers lead the trojans on homecoming for elmwood brimfield you're watching arnold brothers heating and cooling coverage of macomb high sports on tssr game time live presented by mdh I chose physical therapy because I knew I wanted to be in the healthcare field. Um, I wanted to be able to help patients in some way re, uh, related to uh, more in depth. We get to know our patients and that's really uh, what kind of sets us apart. MDH has committed to having a top-notch OB-GYN unit. The new facility, the Dolores Cater Schweitzer Women's Center, this is a quality facility that the patients need to match the quality of care. And then we also have a new clinic, which is state-of-the-art. And here at McDonough, we have a team. And everybody feels like they're a part of the successes that we have. We have a strong team in our office and in labor and delivery. You will get the best care at McDonough District. 
I went through MDH when we were trying to get pregnant. We were struggling the first year, and then when we got pregnant, I stayed at MDH and through labor and now for pediatrics. My experience was nothing short of phenomenal. I met, was met with amazing staff members who helped me through concerns that I had when she was first born, helping me learn how to be a new mom. It was really reassuring and comforting knowing that I had so much support and kindness around me. My entire pregnancy at MDH was amazing. We're always moving. Scratch that. We're always moving forward. But forward can sometimes look a little backwards. Or like circles. Or like nothing at all. But we never stop. We never stop. Because life never stops. It's hard to stop a train. And welcome back to Elmwood Brimfield High School as the marching band's on the field, down under six minutes remaining. And we talked about, Tegan, that the, the last drive that the Bombers scored on was important, not necessarily because, you know, it was do or die, but it got it back on serve, right? So it got them ahead and then Trojans were going to get the ball again, which they did, and the Bombers got forced to turn over to keep them from getting in the end zone. But now the Bombers are up two scores, but the Trojans get the ball first, so if they can make one stop, get a score and make one stop, they're back in it. That's why that, that one touchdown was big for the Bombers. Yeah, a lot of people really don't uh, get that and wonder why, oh, why are you scoring a touchdown like that that, uh, that late? So, it's like you said, stuff like that changes the output outcome of the game drastically because if McComb doesn't get that, like you said, it's a one possession game. Elmwood Brimfield could have still ran down their throats, but now since McComb's up by two, a little bit of the Elmwood, Br Elmwood Brimfield motivation might be down a little bit because they think that two scores is a little bit too much. And it's much easier to say, hey, we can come back after one score rather than Oh, we need two. We need things to go our way, so that way we're able to score twice. Meaning that you have to make a lucky break happen somehow. So we're down under five minutes remaining, and it looks like the dance team is going to come out next for the Trojans. And they'll be. It's kind of. It's different here at uh, Elmwood Brimfield because. The Bombers are on one side of the Crow's Nest fans, and the Trojans fans are on the side that we're on, which is the south side. There's nobody on the school side except for people standing around the fence, so it's a little bit different in that respect because the dance team is down at one end of the field pretty much. You know, most schools you go to, the dance team's right in the middle of the field because they're because the whole one side is a home home team side, right? Yeah, and in a sort of way, it gives them more of an advantage because it isolates them and thinks that they're not really that important. That can sometimes work when you isolate someone else because sometimes you lose the fans when you don't have attention or something to look at. Instead, they'll have to look all the way at the other side and put in more effort. So we'll take a break here, and we'll be back again in just a few minutes on TSSR Game Time Live presented by MDH. I went through MDH when we were trying to get pregnant. We were struggling the first year, and then when we got pregnant, I stayed at MDH and through labor and now for pediatrics. My experience was nothing short of phenomenal. I met, was met with amazing staff members who helped me through concerns that I had when she was first born, helping me learn how to be a new mom. It was really reassuring and comforting knowing that I had so much support and kindness around me. My entire pregnancy at MDH was amazing. I couldn't ask for a better agent, for a better company, in a disaster where you have no idea where to start. I learned that there's not a given in life. It takes a team. There's people that are going to watch out for us and make care. 
it's been pretty stressful. Once we saw Lori and got our plan, it's uh, like a huge weight lifted. MTC Communications is building a high-speed fiber network in our community, and we're putting priority on the areas with the greatest interest. That means we need your input to let us know you want us to build fiber in your area first. Experience the speed and convenience of fiber internet by visiting our special website and registering. Let us know you want fiber internet today and make your voice heard. I chose the MDH OBGYN group uh, because I've heard wonderful things about Dr. Smith. Um, and upon entering the office, I, I really got along with everybody and got a warm feeling. The staff is warm and inviting and welcoming. It's a small community, so it's a really nice uh, hospital to have here in the rural area. I continue to choose MDH because of the relationships I have. I really enjoy everybody here. And welcome back. As you can see, the Bombers coming back on the field. Got a minute to go in halftime, and then we will have a three-minute warm-up period as Elmwood Brimfield has yet to come out either. So it's it's black and orange against orange and black here tonight. Bombers in their away whites, though, of course. But, Tegan, it's one of those deals where the Bombers come. You, you expect to see – the Bombers flying up and down the field. They've flown up and down the field, but it hasn't been how we expected that they would do it. The run game has been very good. And I sit here and I, I think to myself that maybe they are using a run game that they know is very good to counteract the fact that they know that when Elmwood Brimfield has the ball, they're going to pound it, pound it, pound it, and your defense is probably going to be on the field a long time. Yeah, with that as well, I've noticed that with Elmwood Brimfield's defense, they really haven't brought up a lot of linebackers. They've had them stay outfield. They've also done that with their corners as well. So they're saying that we think our uh, our defensive line can break through and get through your running back. And as we've seen, that hasn't really been the case because a lot of them have been staying out, waiting for the running back to come to them rather than them running up to the running back. Well, in their defense, you, you can't bring everybody in the box when you have JT Jeter and Langdon Allen on the outside. That is So true. you have to keep – you have to play more of a, a, a pro style or a traditional style defense against the Bombers because they have weapons at all facets offensively. So they can't bring everybody in the box. If you watch the Bombers, they've got everybody in the box, right? Because – there's a – everybody is within two yards of the line of scrimmage for Elmwood Brimfield, and you just tackle everybody and everybody's there. And that's the difference is that Elmwood Brimfield can't bring everybody in a box because of what McComb brings to the table. Yeah, I mean, it's – not, and it's nothing against Elmwood Brimfield too. It's just some – it's just athletes, man. Sometimes, some places have better athletes, and that's nothing against how they've been playing because they've been playing like – some they've been playing like someone who can beat McComb, and they very much can. They're only down two possessions. This has been McComb's closest game all year. They just have to come off, and they have to do what they want to do to win. They can't make mistakes. They can't they can't solve drives. And if they can do that, and with how McComb's playing, they've been making their mistakes like. It all it takes is one play, and then Elmwood Brimfield is suddenly back in this game. And that's something that we haven't seen at all when we've had McComb playing. So we'll just have to see what Elmwood Brimfield has in store for McComb, Ma see what adjustments they make, see if they want to try blitzing a little bit more. But, again, we'll have to see. 
Well, we've got about a minute before we'll find out because we'll go second half action in just about 60 seconds. The third quarter of play getting ready to start here at Elmwood High School as Arnold Brothers Heating and Cooling presents Bombers Sports on TSSR Game Time Live presented by MDH. Game being brought to you by King Family Chiropractic with locations in Bushnell and Macomb. Supports Macomb athletes. They offer office hours in Macomb Monday and Wednesday and Friday and in Bushnell Tuesday, Thursday and Friday. To set an appointment, call 309-837-MYDC at 6932. They also perform DOT and CDL physicals. Also to bring you this contest is Sports Corner at 124. Macomb's original local sports bar is Sports Corner at 124. With a focus on local sports, catch WIU games and all the area TSSR game time live broadcasts at Sports Corner at 124, all while you're enjoying your favorite cold drink and some of the best food in West Central Illinois. Stop in and say hi at 124 North Randolph Street in Macomb. And Tom Conklin State Farm, face-to-face, over the phone, by email, or by text. You choose how you do business with Tom Conklin State Farm Macomb. You can reach them at 309-837-1200 or visit them online at www.macombsf.com. Better yet, stop in and get your quote today at 1221 West Jackson Street in Macomb. You might have heard the buzzer sound in the background there. Looks like my daughter, who is a sophomore in at Illini West, is at the homecoming game tonight. She just sent me a message. I'll ask if they are winning. Get an update. That's a an opponent for the Bombers down the road. Also, another team having their homecoming tonight is uh, Brown County. I don't remember who they're playing, but I do know that they have their homecoming tonight. Here's an onside kick, and it's going to be not 10 yards. There should be a penalty there, I think. Did that actually go 10 yards? No, there's a flag. Oh, is there a flag? I, was I didn't see the flag come down. That's been a problem for the Bombers trying the onside kick is it's not went out of it's not went 10 yards. It's touched up. Illegal touching out across the 50 before the 50 actually. And so it's going to be a first and they're going to wave off the penalty because it was touched at the 47 yard line. Be first and ten Trojans, and I guess that's about as as much as you could hope for there, isn't it? If you're a Trojans fan, anyway. That's true. You get the ball right where you want to in your own uh, side of the field, and with how they've been doing it, that's perfect to set up their offense. If they can get 50 yard, if they can get 50 yards by doing uh, by doing 20 carries, they'll do it. But they just need to stay consistent and not let uh, the defense bend. You have to break that defense, and that's the only way you're going to win. Not real sure what's going on here, taking a little extra time. There goes the whistle. Lindsey May and Ethan Ladd. We haven't called their names a lot. They've been involved in a lot, but it's such a pile of a mass of humanity in the middle on this type of offense that there's – Five black jerseys and five white jerseys on every tackle. You have you have a lot of athletes going at it, and it's hard to tell which one because you see so many numbers going at each other. Frail on the carry, and he's going to go. Is Lindsey May is going to bring him down? He's going to gain five or so. It looks like it's going to be a gain of five for Frail, Aiden Frail. It's going to be second down and five. He's actually leading uh, the Trojans with carries with uh, 10 carries for 41 Bo, yards. Bo Windish on the carry that time. He's going to get a first down. He's going to go for a gain of eight. First and 10. Trojans inside the 35-yard line. 34-yard line. Hines back under center again. Handoff's going to go to Bo Windish again. He follows his blockers but can't get much room. Windish again, the ball carrier. Numerous bombers there on the stop. First one was Carter Hogue. He bounced it back inside. Ian Case tapping his helmet. Getting about three there. He did gain. Yeah, we'll give him three. Second and seven. And a fake. 
No, it is the pitch to Frail again. Aiden Frail going to go for another gain. This time, gain of four. Can bring up third down and three. Third and four. Short four, long three, 10, 20 remaining. And there's the pitch again to Frail. This time he's not gonna get much. Lindsey May and friends were there that time. Maybe one. Carter Hogue over there as well, I believe, or Bishop. Bishop it was, a gain of two. Fourth down and two. Big, Under 10 minutes to go in the third quarter. Big fourth down here. If you don't get this, you got to make sure you call the right play here. If you don't get this, you've set yourself up in really bad position, so they need to call a good play here. And here goes Frail around left side. They're spread out the Bomber defense. He's going to get a first down, and he's down near the 20-yard line. Looks like about the 21, a gain of five, a first and 10 from the 21 for the Trojans. See if that's what they say or not here. It looks like First it, though. The They're saying 20. It doesn't look like it's a 20 to me. I call it 21. They changed it to 21. 9.25 as the handoff goes up the middle that time. The Bombers come up with the football. Ethan Ladd has it. Turnover. Bombers. And Ethan Ladd comes up with the fumble recovery for the Bombers. Connor Bishop sort of limping off the field right now. Big turnover for the Bombers, and Ethan Ladd comes up with it for MHS. It's 24-14, and the Bombers have a chance to make this a three-score game here with 9-21 remaining in the third quarter. You were just mentioning where's Ethan and Lindsey. Well, Ethan showed up. And Lindsey had a couple tackles on that drive as well. Here's Duncan. Going to hand off to Cochran. He rounds around left side, splits it back inside. A nice little cutback, and he's going to go for a nice gain on the play. Looks like a gain of nine. And it's going to bring up second down and one. Ah, we're going to give him nine. Don't you think that looks like nine? Yeah, I think that's nine. Give him 85 yards on the night. Duncan now. This might be a spot where you go for the jugular. Yeah. With a second and short. Run it up the middle. Oh. They're going to go throw it downfield. And they find a, cut, a slant. Oh, it's dropped. Good defensive play. Langdon has it knocked away by number two, Bailey Elwell, on the coverage. An incomplete pass. The first true incomplete pass of the night for Duncan. It seemed that Langdon just juggled the ball a little bit too much and wasn't able to secure and pull it in. Yeah, I just saw it come up later there on YouTube, and uh, it did look like maybe there was a hand by Ewell a little early, but Duncan now is going to hand off to Reiner. Reiner's going to have a sports corner first down, and he keeps his legs pumping. He's going to go for a nice gain, a gain of four for Max Reiner. Now they, give him, they say five, so we'll give him five. That gives him... 144 yards on the night, 17 carries. Duncan now is the clock down to 819 remaining in the third quarter. Reiner again. Now that's Cochran this time. There's a flag. We'll probably be back for holding. No, it was Reiner, excuse me. It is holding, you're right. You saw it. Looks like it's about at the line of scrimmage. Yeah. Like you've said, McComb's been very much penalized this game more than we've seen. The Trojans only have had one penalty on the day today, and McComb needs to stop doing mistakes like that. 50 because, yards and penalties. Because that's what ends up hurting them in the long run. Because now you put yourself in a situation where you have to dig yourself out of the hole you dug. That's actually a 12-yard penalty. Spot of the foul. Cochran, the ball carrier that time. See where they mark it at here. A gain of four for Cochran. Second and 18 from the 18. 
You got to think they might be throwing here. He will stop, ba drop back, looks, rolls left now, and breaks a tackle, fakes a throw, and then gets ran out of bounds. Jack Duncan pushed out of bounds by 25. Roman Mitchell. He's going to lose a few more yards. Seems like he wanted to throw it downfield, but he didn't feel like he would be would have been able to get it off very cleanly. So, yeah. loss of five. He's got 11 yard negative carry here in yardage. Duncan now is going to roll right, pump fakes, tucks it, and he's going to be dropped in the backfield again. And he'll lose about four on that play. Number 54 on the sack for the Trojans was Travis Howard. Elmwood Fourth and forever for the Bombers. Elmwood Brimfield might send the house on this play to try to get a blocked punt. This will be the place to do it. Yeah. Drew Watson back to punt. Not as good a punt that time. And it's going to take a Trojan bounce. A very short punt. About 11 yards is what it ended up being. It'll be a turnover after the punt. It'll be first and 10 at the 20 for the Trojans. McCombs just keep on getting in their own way. At this point, it's not Elmwood Brimfield beating them, it's themselves. How many penalties do they have on the day? They got five penalties for 52 yards. Oh. That, that's not been helping them so far. So Hines back under center again. He's going to give it to Sloan Windish. Taylor. Oh, no, it's not Sloan Windish. It was number 24, not 34. That's Lane Durst. Lindsey May on the stop, a gain of three, second down and seven. Clock down to the 6-10 mark of the third quarter. And there's Durst again on the carry. Oh. Ball's come out, and the Bombers might have it again. I think they're they do have it. The Bombers have it, a turnover. Who's got it this time? I think that's Max Reiner. The ball was stripped out. See who climbs up. It is Max Reiner. I think he's the one that stripped it, and it popped up in the air, and he grabbed it as well. A turnover again, a second of the half for the Trojans, and the Bombers have the ball back with 5.59 remaining in the third quarter. They were moving the ball in their last drive, and a 12-yard holding penalty from a spot of the foul ended up stalling that drive, followed by a couple sacks. We'll see what the Bombers do here. And there's, and there's another flag. It might be offsides. They didn't stop to play. We'll see here. Nice game by Reiner. Let's see what the flag is, though. Illegal shift on the Bombers. Another five-yard penalty. Give them 57 yards on six penalties now for the Bombers. Can't keep making those mistakes. This. 5.51 remaining in the third quarter. And several changes of possession here, and the ball's been at the Bombers' end of the field the whole time. Yeah. First and 15 at the 10-yard line for the Bombers now. Is, and there's an illegal procedure. We'll see if they say it was, oh, they're going to call off sides. Five-yard penalty for the Trojans as they jumped off sides and brought made the offensive end move there. So it's going to bring up a first and ten now as everything's a wash. Yeah. At least they're not trying to give up on Jack's hard count. It's finally worked, and now they have to use the run game to get them out of this situation. A throw downfield. Downfield is Langdon now, and he's got the catch. He sidesteps. Buell, now, now there's going to be a flag downfield, and he's finally going to be brought down, but that's going to be a flag way downfield, and I don't know who it's going to be on. It's behind the play. It's going to be an unsportsmanlike or something, but it should be at the end of the play, I think. We'll see if it's a hold or what. 
they might. Lang? Langdon Allen had the first down catch. We'll see what they do here. Oh, people were stepping on the line, so they were still in yep, bounds. Yep, it was a sideline interference. It is from the 15-yard line. Another penalty for the Bombers, but the pass goes 35, 40, 44 yards to Langdon Allen, and then a five-yard penalty. Eight. Yeah. You, you can't make those mistakes. Even though you got the first down, this this McComb team has not been disciplined at all. Reiner on the carry, breaks a jersey tackle attempt, but he's going to go across the line of scrimmage. Short gain, though. 44 or 43, they're going to move it farther than I thought. That's a three-yard gain, second down and seven for Max Reiner and the Bombers. 147 yards on the ground for Reiner now. Bombers fans getting a little worked up. Yep. Reiner again on the carry. Goes right side. Eating some clock up here, the Bombers, with 425 remaining. I know the gain of three is going to bring up third down and four. I know the Bombers have been leading for most of this quarter, but with how they played today, it does not seem like they – are leading at all. This this has been the most sloppiest game they played to the state. Duncan with two setbacks, one to each side now as the shotgun formation. He's going to throw it into the slant right side. That's Jeter, I believe. We'll see if he gets when he stands up. It is Jeter. Hey, Sports Corner first down from the 40. Actually, it's from the 39. So a nine-yard completion and a sports corner first down. Jeter gets his third catch. Gives him 49 yards receiving. Seems like Max Reiner's coming out and Cochran's going back in. They might run out to the sides here, so keep an eye out for that. Langdon Allen near JT Jeter far. Cochran a deep setback. Handoff is going to go to Cochran. Around left side, cuts up inside his block of Lindsey May, and he's going to be drugged back. And there comes the flag. The ball comes out late. Cochran falls back on it, but they throw the flag late. And I think that's going to be un unnecessary roughness, but I'm not real sure. The carry is going to go forward. It is unsportsmanlike on the Trojans. A gain of four for Cochran. And then a 15-yard unsportsmanlike conduct penalty for the Trojans as they kept just driving after the whistle was blown, driving and pushing on Cochran. And Jack Duncan runs out there now to say, hey, let's settle down, guys. A sports corner first down on the penalty, a first and 10 at the 13-yard line, it would appear, for the Bombers. And both teams getting a little frisky here, and it's a spot where – Duncan, being the senior that he is, comes out and says, you know, guys, settle down here. We don't want to get caught up in the craziness. We got the 10-point lead. Reiner on the carry. He bounces it outside, cuts it upfield. Touchdown, Bombers. Max Reiner from 13 yards out. And the Bombers score another touchdown. They go up 30-14 to on the Trojans. Yeah, like you said, um, when you have a good QB like Jack out there who's played the game for a very long time, he can very much settle down the offense and play it the way that it should be played because who knows what happens there. What if one of the linemen just get a little bit too angry and then uh, unsportsmanlike gets called on them? Like He's, he's good at calming people down. Duncan's going to take the snap, hand off to Reiner. He bounces outside, cuts it upfield, and he's going to go short. No good. Run failed that time. That's kind of huge because now it's still a two-possession game. That is correct. Stays two possessions now, 30-14, to 14, as Max Reiner scores from 13 yards out. With 2.48 remaining in the third quarter, the Bombers are up 
30 to 14. This game being brought to you by Arnold Brothers Heating and Cooling as they bring Bomber Sports all season long on TSSR Game Time Live presented by MDH. Also helping to bring you this contest is the Old Dairy located at 210 South Lafayette Street in Macomb, serving soup, salad, sandwiches, homemade dessert, Blue Bunny ice cream, and they have a full service coffee bar. Breakfast is served all day long and they have free Wi-Fi. Visit them online at www.olddairymacomb.com or call 309-837-6700 for your takeout. And Ron LB Auto Sales with locations in Macomb and Augusta. With 80 years of car sales experience, Ron LB Auto Sales is your hometown go-to for your next car. In Macomb on East Jackson Street, stop and sit, talk to Justin, Jared, or Chris. Or visit them at www.lbsellscars.com to check out their inventory. You couldn't talk to Jared this week. He was down at the Bad Boys Mowers Convention enjoying some uh, work, I'm sure, as there's the kick by Langdon Allen. It's going to be picked up at the 25. Frail's got some running room, but he's going to be dropped by Lindsey May. He's going to take it out to the 38, a gain of about 13 on the return. It's going to be first down Trojans at their own 38-yard line, 243 remaining in the third quarter. Bombers with the lead, 30-14. to 14. I was going to say, it seems like we've been calling his name a lot today for the Trojans. Uh, Aiden Frail has been just balling out all game, whether it's on kick return, whether it's on offense, whether it's on defense. He has done his job, and he's done it amazingly. Hines going to hand off to Bo Windish, I do believe. It was number seven. He's going to go for a gain of three. It'll bring up second down and seven. Clock running, 2.30 to go in the third quarter. Oh, the touchdown thing's still on there, isn't it? Is that what you're trying to tell me? Yeah. You could just say it. Everybody knows I forget it all the time. Hines going to give it to Windish again, and he's going to be hit initially about three yards past the line of scrimmage. Reiner hit him, but he's going to go for another gain of four this time. It's going to be third down and three, or short four. Two minutes remaining in the third quarter. 17 minutes of football left. Yeah. Can't a lot of stop here. Hines, Frail, he's got some running room and some blockers. He splits it off the left side. He's got around the corner for the first time tonight. He's going to go for a first down, and it's going to be into Bomber territory inside the 40, I think. Nope, right about the 41-yard line. First and 10 at the 41 of the Bombers. Again, a 14 there? Uh, yeah, I think so. Hines to Frail again. Aiden Frail getting a lot of work now as he goes across the 40. A gain of two, second down and eight. 120 remaining as the clock continues to run here in the third quarter. Hines going to give it to Bo Windish as they do the student body right sweep. And Windish is going to be close to a first down. If he doesn't have it, he will have a first down. From the 39 down to the 28, an 11 yard gain. And it's first and 10 Trojans at the 29 yard line, or 28 yard line, excuse me, under a minute to go in the third quarter. This time it's going to be handoff up the middle to Aiden Frail. Short gain. Tackled by Lindsey May. Lindsey May has stepped up here in the second half. Give him one. Second down and nine from the 26 or 27 yard line. Gain of one from the 28. So he has to be at the 27. They got a 26 on the scoreboard. But this time it's going to go to Windish, and he's not going to get anything as May was there in the backfield. Also was Carter Hogue. And short, little to no gain on the play. Third and nine. Coming out of the game for the Bombers, number 50. That was Elijah Starbuck. And that will be the end of the third quarter of play. 
The Bombers lead by 16, 30 to 14, but the Trojans are threatening third and nine at the Bomber 26 or 27 yard line. We'll take a break and be back on TSSR Game Time Live presented by MDH as Arnold Brothers brings you Bombers football from Elmwood tonight. We'll be back in just a minute. I chose the MDH OBGYN group uh, because I've heard wonderful things about Dr. Smith. Um, and upon entering the office, I, I really got along with everybody and got a warm feeling. The staff is warm and inviting and welcoming. It's a small community, so it's a really nice uh, hospital to have here in the rural area. I continue to choose MDH because of the relationships I have. I really enjoy everybody here. And welcome back to Elmwood High School as Arnold Brothers Heating and Cooling brings Bomber Sports to TSSR Game Time Live presented by MDH. I'm Dwayne Hewlett. Tegan Perry is alongside John Burton on camera. Fourth quarter coming your way right now as it's going to be a keeper by Hines. He was stopped in the backfield or almost stopped in the backfield as it was Cole Windish that time taking the snap. Bishop was in the backfield. It's going to bring up fourth and long for the Trojans, but into the fourth quarter with their offensive style, they can't very well not go for it here as Hines comes back into the game. It's fourth down and eight. That was a two-yard gain earlier, it would appear, but don't change it. We'll just leave it. Fourth and eight. That's a really short nine. Yeah. <laughs> as it says on the scoreboard. Uh -huh. And now they're going to false start, a five-yard penalty for the Trojans. That's not what you need when it's fourth and long already. It's going to bring up fourth and about 13 for the Trojans. They are in bomber territory. They'll make it fourth and 13 at the 30, almost to the 31 for the Trojans. Well, now if you're McComb, they're going to have to pass because – Unless you're expecting a 13-yard gain or some trick, uh, trickery where they, you know, do like a pitch or like a option, they're probably going to throw here. So, and they're going to throw a slant to the right uh, out into the flat, and a hook and ladder play it does not work. I believe is what that was. And that's what happens when you have very one-dimensional. Offenses like these where they just run, 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 and run. You have, unfortunately, when it comes to more plays where you have to get longer yardage, it's you gotta you gotta find something that's work. Gain of eight on the pass play for the Trojans. 10.54 remaining. The Bombers, a chance to eat some clock and maybe put a start a nail in a coffin here. If you can get up three scores against a running team with under eight minutes to go in the fourth quarter, you probably got good thing. Oh, and Max Reiner, he bounces left. Now he cuts it back inside, and he is going to go for a big gain from the 22 into Trojans territory right about the 49-yard line, a 29-yard run. A 29-yard run for Max Reiner, and it's a sports corner first down for the Bombers, 179 yards rushing for Max Reiner. It's always fun to see Max Reiner run. It's always a joy to see him just bowl people over, make good cuts. It, he is a amazing football player and an amazing athlete. 20 carries, 179 yards for Reiner. He's got another one here. Hits the pile and it bounces left. He's going to go. No, he's going to be drugged down from behind, but it's going to be a sports corner first down all the way from the 49 down inside the 35, it would appear. Down inside the 25, excuse me. At about the 24 or 25, we'll see where they mark it. A 25-yard gain. See, at the 25? Yep. That's what they're saying. So we'll say a 24-yard gain for Max Reiner. Back-to-back 20-plus -back carry, 20-plus yard 
gains. Does that put him over 200 for it the day? It does not. Not quite yet. Oh, it does, actually. 203. Forgot how many he had. 203 yards for the game thus far. Reiner again on the carry. He's going to bounce. It. Oh, nice tackle. That's Sloan Windish on the stop. Reiner's going to go for a very short gain, maybe one. It's a sports corner first down prior to that, 204 yards. And the Bombers, I forgot, I stopped keeping track of sports corner first downs, but they had five of them in their first two drives, and they've got a bunch of them piling up here in the second half. We're down to nine minutes and 18 seconds, so they're moving the ball down the field really quickly. You'd probably like to burn a little more time if you could, but – if you take points, you take points, right? Yeah, but at the end of the day. Well, we said they are burning clock now, waiting for the official to put his arm up and start counting. Reiner, again in the backfield, breaks one tackle deep, bounces over another, and he's going to maybe lose a yard or two. He's going to lose more than a yard or two. He's going to lose four on the carry. That's his first negative play of the night, and that brings him back down to 200 even. 30 to 14, Bombers lead with 8.37 remaining in the football game. They have now face a third and 13 from the 28-yard line of the Trojans. And I think they're going to waste as much time as they can here again. They may take a timeout. We'll wait and see. Well, what they'll probably do here if they don't take a timeout is run the ball and then see where they are yards-wise and either – Pass it. And there's Coach Horrell going down to take the timeout. So with 8-10 remaining, the Bombers take a timeout with a third and 13 from the 28 of the Trojans. This is a as big of a stop as the Trojans have had the entire game if they can get one here because you don't want the Bombers to go up, obviously, three scores. And the Bombers are probably going to look at this as two plays, right? You got two plays to get 13 yards. Yeah, but you also have to keep in mind, too, that El uh, Elmwood might want to drain one of their timeouts to make sure that McComb doesn't drain more clock. So you have to keep that in mind, too. And that might change their entire game plan. They might want to run the ball to waste more time. But if Elmwood calls a timeout, they might want to throw it and see how much time they can waste. So here we go, 30 to 14, 8, 10 remaining in the fourth quarter. Bombers lead by 16. We, we wanted to see how the Bombers re would respond to some adversity. They've had a close game and they've had adversity, much of it caused by themselves, but we'll see how they continue to move here. They're up by 16. Hopefully Coach Hurl can come over here and talk to us tonight. Hand off to Reiner, he sidesteps one tackler. Shakes another, shakes another, keeps his feet pumping, and he's going to go for a nice little gain on a play. It'll bring up fourth down, but a gain of – he got a gain of eight on that? A gain of eight is going to bring up fourth down and five, and what a run by Max Reiner. He just bowls people over. That That's just as simple as that. He has the body width and base to just play bowling. He, stopped, he sidestepped the first guy who was in the backfield, and then he broke a couple tackles and went for a gain of eight. Fourth and five here as the Bombers have the clock down under eight minutes, seven minutes and 25 seconds remaining. Clock running, counting going. Duncan's going to go for the jugular. JT Jeter, touchdown, Bombers! From the 20, a 20-yard touchdown pass from Jack Duncan to JT Jeter. And the Bombers start tacking the coffin closed as they go up by six on a Tom Conklin State Farm touchdown here at Elmwood High School. For some reason, I didn't think JT was going to be able to run up. And then I realized I shouldn't be saying that. It's JT Jeter. Why am I ever doubting he won't get that touchdown? Up high, extending to get the touchdown. The Bombers go up. 36-14, now a two. And <laughs> Lindsey May coming on the field late. They were one player short, it would appear, and the Bombers are going to have to take a timeout. And uh, not where you want to waste a timeout, but you're, when you're up by 22, I guess it doesn't make as much difference. But this two-point conversion, when you're up by 22, doesn't seem like a big deal maybe, but it kind of is because if you can get this two-point conversion, the worst they can do is tie you with three touchdowns. 
yeah, they that, cannot go ahead with three touchdowns. Yeah, that's true, and that's something that you have to really consider because, like you said, most people think, oh, it's not worth it, but who's to say that McComb doesn't make a couple mistakes on their own? Like um, Elmwood Brimfield gets a wide-open hole, and uh, they run in for a touchdown, and then on the kickoff, McComb goes up and try to receive the ball, but it's bobbled, and soon Elmwood Brimfield has it. Like, there's so many mistakes that can happen that people don't know. 7-18 in the fourth quarter. 7-21, to 21, a 20-yard touchdown pass. And a pass is going to go to Jeter again. Floffs it up and makes the catch. JT Jeter. Gets the pass complete in the two-point conversion, and it's 38-14. We'll take a break and be back here on TSSR Game Time Live presented by MDH in just a couple moments. We're always moving. Scratch that. We're always moving forward. But forward can sometimes look a little backwards or like circles, or like nothing at all. But we never stop. We never stop because life never stops. It's hard to stop a train. I chose physical therapy because I knew I wanted to be in the healthcare field. Um, I wanted to be able to help patients in some way re uh, related to uh, more in depth. We get to know our patients and that's really uh, what kind of sets us apart. And welcome back as Langdon Allen getting ready to kick off. You're watching Arnold Brothers Heating and Cooling presentation of Bomber Sports on TSSR Game Time Live presented by MDH. Dwayne Hewlett, Tegan Perry, and John Burton bringing you to coverage tonight from Elmwood High School, and it's 38-14. Bombers with the lead. Langdon Allen, a... That kick went six yards, folks. Not sure what he was trying to do there, but whatever he was trying to do didn't work. I think he was trying to pop it up like one of those kicks earlier, but it just wasn't working. But I think he tried to kick the top of the ball and make it bounce, but it didn't go anywhere. He might have got too little of the top of the ball. Coach Hall is laughing at the kick right now. <laughs> well, haven't had a chance to look at our live chat much tonight. We do have some live chat going on. Only vibes in there. Tyler Cummings. That's some Bomber D. That's right. Emmer is Go Carter from home. Sports corner. Reiner is having a game. That is correct. And there's a carry. Durst, the ball carrier. He's going to go for a gain of three. It's second and seven. Jessica LaGrange. I don't know what the score is on the line I West. I asked my daughter. Jessica, I don't think so. Oh, maybe she did respond. Let me look here. We'll tell you if she did. She did. Right. It was 22-8 at the moment is what she told me. Illini West winning. <laughs> Pineapple Queen says, let's go tippy toes. Langdon Allen. How many nicknames does he have? He he's, has got a, he's got a bunch of them, doesn't he? Booger, tippy toes. <laughs> Should we come up with one? Booger, tippy toes. That's, that's yeah. a yeah. – We'll just call him BT. How about that? Yeah. Start calling Langdon Allen BT. Here we go. Hines back to throw. He's got a receiver. Oh, oh it's picked off. By Guess who? BT. <laughs> Was it BT over there? Yeah, BT picked it, it is off. BT got the interception as Hines went for the – and I thought he was open, but playing deep safety was old BT himself, yeah. Langdon Allen. And uh, he's going to bring up a first down for the Bombers. And they brought that way back farther than I thought they were going to. It's going to be about the 38-yard line. First and 10 Bombers on the turnover with 6-16 remaining. And it was 20. Did I say, what was the score of the Illini West game? I said right as that all happened 22 right there. 22-6, to six, I believe. 20-something to 8, wasn't it? 22-8. to 22-8 to eight was the score. McCombs just going to probably run the ball for the rest of the game. And understandably so. 
Denzel Cochran with the run, and he's fallen short behind the line. Howard's had a good game. Cochran's going to lose a yard on the play. Second down and 11. Cochran has not reached the century mark yet. He's got 13 carries for 92 yards. I think he wants. I think he wants that. Uh, I think he wants those eight yards right now. It's like, give me, coach. I need them. <laughs> Tyler Cummins is uh, laughing at the BT nickname. And now it's going to go to Cochran again around right side. He's got some running room this time. And another nice tackle. Who was that there? I can't see for the players. Is that Howard again? It was, no, it's Sloan Windish that time on the stop. But a gain of six for Cochran. Two more. He's at 98 on 14 carries. Tyler Cummins says his big sister gave him the Booger Boo nickname. She jumped out of her chair. <laughs> BT, Booger Boo, what was it? Booger Boo and Tippy Toes. Yep. Well, it seems Max Reiner in, so. Two yards shy of the century mark for Cochran right now. 4.50 remaining as Duncan's going to let as much time as possible run off the clock there. They start counting, and they use every bit as they can. Reiner runs right up the middle looking for a sports corner first down. Looks like he's going to be a couple yards short. We're at fourth down after a gain of four. So we're at fourth down and two. Reiner. Up to 212 yards unofficially on 25 carries. Hey, you know who needs two yards to get to that century mark? Yeah, but Cochran's not in there at the moment. Ah. It's Reiner back in, still in. And, uh, you know, our stats could be off. They might have Cochran at 100 already. Pineapple Queen, I'm the favorite cousin who just calls him tippy toes all the time before and after games. Oh, Duncan looking to throw, and he's going to get tackled. He drops the football, and it's picked up. And it's going to be brought down from behind by Lindsey May. The ball picked up. That is not what you wanted. It's picked up and ran back by Roman Mitchell, and it's going to be First and goal, I do believe, for the first and goal at about the eight. Or is it inside the five? No, it's it's outside the five, about the six or seven. Yep. Eight-yard line. Yeah. First and goal for the – and that's just an avenue to get him back in the game. Handoff goes up the middle. Nothing doing that time. Oh, Slam to the ground. Malachi Butler Grissom with the tackle. Malachi coming in big that time. We haven't called his name much tonight, but, man, he came in with a big hit there and a gain of one or two on the carry. Going to bring second down and six. Clock still running. 325 remaining as they're not getting in any hurry here. And in the backfield again, the Bombers all over this, but they're going to keep pushing the pile forward. Bishop and others are there. See where they mark it down at. In about two there. Yep. Third and goal from the six. And they'll once more just... And they are taking quite a bit of time themselves. Pitch is going to go to Frail. Is that Frail? Yeah. It Mal was Frail. Malachi Butler Grissom with yet another tackle behind the line of scrimmage. That gain of one. It's going to be fourth and goal at the one, and they'll take or at the five. They'll take a timeout. Two twenty-six remaining. Elmwood takes a timeout. It's pretty obvious that Elmwood has conceded this game. They wasted a lot of time there, down three scores. If you were going to think and you had a chance to get back in this, you would have you would have uh, probably rushed a little bit more there than they have, but then they take the timeout because 
if you want any chance of winning, right, you have to get something here on a fourth and goal at the five. I, I don't I don't know what they were trying to go for right here. Like like you said, it seems like they've conceded it, but again, I'm not the coach. I might be worried about, you know what, we still have three games down the line. I don't want to injure my players. Uh, let's keep them healthy for the next Spe game. Speaking of that, I'm, I'm interested to talk to Coach Horrell if he can get over here and uh, – to see if he really wanted to throw the ball on that turnover when Duncan turned it over there. Um, I'm, I'm just kind of interested to see if that wasn't maybe a broken play or if they thought they saw something and, and uh, what really happened there. Right. Melanie Butler is watching again. Malachi, excited to see him in the game as he goes back out there again. Like I said, you can't teach height. And it's fourth and goal from the five. Hines going back to throw now. He's got somebody open in the flat. It's a touchdown pass. Aiden Frail. He ran one in, I think, didn't he? Yep, and that was a three-yard touchdown. Five-yard touchdown pass. 2.20 remaining. One to three, five-yard touchdown pass. See what they do here. 30 to 20. 38 to 20, excuse me. He's going to try it again. Rolls right and throws it into the dirt. Incomplete. Pass failed. A uh, little side note, Aiden Frail has a hat trick for touchdowns. He has a pick six, a rushing touchdown, and a, pat and a receiving touchdown. So it's 38 to 20. We've seen some odd hack tricks in the last couple weeks. Ian Case last week had a – he had a – he scored a touchdown, had a sack, and, and what was it, kicked off? Uh, he uh, he had a kickoff a and, fumble recovery. and a fumble recovery on yep. the kickoff. Yep. So he uh, he had an odd trifecta tonight. On the other side, Aiden Frail has a weird trifecta of his own, having three touchdowns in three different disciplines, receiving, rushing, and defensively on a pick six. Mm. Reiner's the star of the game, though. He mm. is lights out. He is at. 25 carries for 212 yards. I'll be interested to see if they put Cochran back in here to try and get uh, I mean, a, a couple more yards if he's not at the 100. They might have him at the 100-yard mark already. Yeah. That might be why he's right. – they, they have him back to receive the kick, but I don't think they're going to be kicking it off deep. On the kick for the – Trojans, number 32 again, Josiah Good. See how good he is. Here we go. It's going to be a squib, and it's going to be covered up on the front line. Ian Case, go figure. <laughs> Just brought him up, and there he is. Let's see if Cochran, Cochran is going to stay in. It'd be nice if he could get his 100 yards, according to our stats, too. Yeah. We'll see what Coach has to say when he comes over here, though. Is Reiner in? Because if he's in, they might be going for a knee. Nope. Nope, Cochran's in. There's too much time. you got to get one first down to run the clock out, I think. Yeah. So, 2.20 remaining, fourth quarter. Bombers lead 38-20. to And Duncan back in the shotgun again. Cochran to deep setback. It's going to go to Cochran. He's going to go left side. Breaks it upfield. He's got 200, or he's got 100, but not much more than that. Reiner's got 200. Give yep. him a gain of four or three? Four. four. And that's going to put him to 102 yards and by our stats. And, and Cochran goes out. <laughs> gets, his, gets what we think to get him to 100 and get him out. And like I said, he might have already been in there. It, it's hard to tell right. what their actual stats say. But ours are extremely unofficial, folks, for anybody wondering at home. The only thing official about them is we made an attempt. That's that's we officially attempted. That is correct. One thirty-five remaining. Clock running. Duncan up under center this time. Reiner's going to take it from the I formation. Breaks a tackle. Goes left side and then falls down to keep it stay in bounds. He's going to go for a gain of three. 
Well, that's a long three. I'm going to give him three, third and four. 215 yards unofficially on 26 carries for Reiner now. Yeah. Down to the minute mark before they break the huddle here. Right now, yeah. 60 seconds remaining here in the football game. You're watching Arnold Brothers heating and cooling coverage of Macomb High Sports on TSSR Game Time Live presented by MDH. And they are going to take a knee now because they can get under the mark. They do, and uh, the clock ball has to get set, and that'll be the last play, I do believe. Fourth, and that'll be it. Ethan Ladd's going to come off the field. See if they make him snap it again. They are not. That's going to be it. Final score from Elmwood. Tyler Cummins, thank you, sir. I appreciate that. We try to be unbiased, but you have to show a little bit of favoritism for your home team, right? But we'd like to let everybody get their due, and hopefully everybody that's watching can enjoy it no matter what side you're watching from. That's our goal here at TSSR Game Time Live, presented by MDH as the handshake takes place. And there is Langdon Allen and Aiden Frail out at center field talking. I wonder if they're saying, hey, you want to trade jerseys? <laughs> I mean, I mean, you have um, you have BT who's had a wonderful game today who just went off, but then you went for Mr. Hat Trick over here, Aiden Frail, who just he went off in his own perspective. But oh, overall, I think for Macomb, this is a game that, yeah, it feels good now, but you need to really start fixing things up. The first the first quarter was not what you wanted it to be, and you made too many mistakes that put you in bad situations. But thankfully, you can be able to fix those up with a couple of days of practice. Here's Mr. Steve Horrell walking over here near us. Hopefully, Coach Tanner Horrell will find his way over here this evening. But we'll take a short break and be back here on TSSR Game Time Live, presented by MDH in just a couple minutes. I went through MDH when we were trying to get pregnant. We were struggling the first year. And then when we got pregnant, I stayed at MDH and through labor and now for pediatrics. My experience was nothing short of phenomenal. I met, was met with amazing staff members who helped me through concerns that I had when she was first born, helping me learn how to be a new mom. It was really reassuring and comforting knowing that I had so much support and kindness around me. My entire pregnancy at MDH was amazing. MDH has committed to having a top-notch OB-GYN unit. The new facility, the Dolores Cater Schweitzer Women's Center, this is a quality facility that the patients need to match the quality of care. And then we also have a new clinic, which is state-of-the-art. And here at McDonough, we have a team. And everybody feels like they're a part of the successes that we have. We have a strong team in our office and in labor and delivery. You will get the best care at McDonough District. I couldn't ask for a better agent, for a better company, in a disaster where you have no idea where to start. I learned that there's not a given in life. It takes a team. There's people that are going to watch out for us and they care. It's been pretty stressful. Once we saw Lori and got our plan, it's... Uh, like a huge weight lifted. And welcome back to Elmwood High School as Arnold Brothers Heating and Cooling brings Bombers Sports to TSSR Game Time Live presented by MDH. Tegan, what do you got for some stats for the Trojans? Uh, for Sloan Windish, I had uh, five, yard, uh, five carries for 10 yards. For Gavin Buell, I'll, I have seven carries for 32 yards. For Aiden Frail, I have um, 19... 19 carries with two fumbles for um, for 64 yards and the touchdown. 
Not to mention he also had a pick six as well. Oliver Hines, he had negative one yard today for two carries. And then Lane Durst had uh, two carries for five yards. Uh, Oliver Hines was three for uh, five today with 15 yards, a touchdown, and two interceptions. And then Aiden Frail, again, had another receiving touchdown. So a good night for the Bombers really ended up being a good night for the Bombers' defense. Yeah, if he will. Okay, thank you. Steve Horrell asking us if Tanner is going to come up and talk to us. We hope that he does. He's going to go get him for us. So looking at stats for the Bombers, unofficially 46 carries for 293 yards for the Bombers tonight, 26 carries for 215 yards for Max Reiner. Denzel Cochran had 15 carries for 102 yards. Boy, that didn't take long for that to uh, pop up. Give me just a second, folks. I'm going to get some stuff uh, removed from our live chat. The nice thing about this, this is why you're supposed to have a producer do this stuff so I don't have to stop talking, but we don't need that stuff in here, so we will get rid of it while we can. <laughs> Coach Horrell's going to find his way up here. That's right, Bill Horrell. Playoffs officially clinched for the Bombers. They don't have to worry about making it in at 5-4. and four. They're 6-0 and oh now. So they are officially in the playoffs for the IHSA football season. Monica Fox says, beautiful game, guys. Bomber wins again. Undefeatable. Hey, looky there. Tanner Horrell finds it. No, I'm, I'm right here, buddy. We didn't, didn't make you walk up all the stairs tonight. We'll uh, get you down here pretty quick. Hey, uh, you know... I'm going to start off. I mean, we've we got a whole lot of good stuff to talk about. But I'm going to start off with the one thing. Jack Duncan's last play, last carry, not yep. the last carry, but the last one on the on the drive where they uh, scored their last touchdown. Was that supposed to be a pass or was it a broken play or, or uh, what, what happened? Yeah, there? it was supposed to be a hitch. They were six yards off us and it was, what, fourth and two. Um, so we're going to let our best players make a play there. Um, and he just never got the ball. Tried to tuck it, and then uh, it just slipped. Um, that stuff happens, doesn't it? It does. You know, we've been fortunate it hasn't happened much this year. Um, but, yeah, too many too many turnovers tonight. Some Bill Horrell guy <laughs> hopped in our live chat. I don't, you know him? Oh, uh, maybe. I don't know. What did he say? He, he said that your playoffs officially clinched. Yeah, I just told him that. You know, I said we knew we were going there, but it's good to officially be in. So uh, two years in a row is a good a good start. Well, I'll tell you what, you guys, I, we had Cochran at 98 yards before his last carry unofficially. I didn't know where you guys had him. I said, uh, we were like, come on, get him in there for one more play. Get him in there. Get him that, uh, get him that century mark. So we had him at, at 15 carries for 102 yards. We're, we're there. We're close anyway. So, yep. And then Reiner we had for 26 carries for 215. That's awesome. You know, they, they did a good job while – they took away JT and Langdon. They played that too high safety look, and they were sprinting over the top. Um, since last week, we, we took advantage of that, and we did a great job around the ball. Our line stepped up and opened some huge holes, and those two ran the ball really hard. It was kind of a, a depiction of difference in the running philosophies, right? Yep. You guys spread it out a little bit, used lanes, and, and I'll tell you what, Reiner and Cochran planted their feet, that, that cut foot, they planted and went upfield as good as any running backs I've seen in a long time tonight. Yeah, they found some lanes. Sometimes I even lost them on behind the line and on the other side of the field. Um, but both of those guys saw the hole and they took it. And it's a stretch play where they're trying to get the edge. But if they, they see a lane, they take it. And they got north and south and made things happen. I uh, I can tell you that from what, uh, what it looked like up here, you guys had opportunities early and – you guys maybe made more mistakes tonight than you've made all year long. Yeah, and you, And it seemed like, you know, we said at one point you guys were up by two scores, but really Elmwood 
wasn't that in the game. I mean, they you never they were there, but it was more that you were letting them be there than the fact that they were making themselves. There. Yeah, uh, I mean the first the first pick. Um, I mean that's how they scored their first touchdown was a pick six. Um, so I mean that was their first score. And then we went down, scored, and they came back and scored. And then after that, our defense really, sh I mean, shut them down. I, I feel like we did a pretty good job there. Both of their scores came directly after turnovers. Yeah. We even, even though even the second one was a turnover, I think, from Reiner that they took right yes. back down the field. Yep. And we talked about, about it before the game, penalties and turning the ball over. If we don't do those two things, we win the football game. Well, we did those two things. <laughs> and you still and won. We still won. I so had that's you for seven penalties for 62 yards. So <laughs> felt like a lot more than that. It, it did, and I might have missed some. And but I mean, it, it, it was like key like plays. Were, yeah, they were at key spots, right? I mean, yeah. you'd have a play that looked good, and then it'd be brought back. Or it'd yeah. be first and 10 after a first down, and then you'd have a 12-yard holding penalty. Yeah. That's what. That's where the spot of the foul penalty makes it even worse. Yeah. It? So a 10-yard penalty becomes 12, 14, 15 yards. Yeah, it was killer. I mean, uh, I mean, the first drive, we get a penalty, a full start, and then a little snap. I don't know what happened on the snap. I'll have to look at the film, and that sets you back 15 yards. I mean, not, probably not 15 yards, but it felt like it. And that was the first pick six. And then start the second half, the one time we punted in the second half there, I think we break a huge run, gets called back for a hold. So those things, we just got to clean those up because – we're good enough. We don't need to do those things. I mean, we don't need to do too much. Um, so, yeah. You uh, talked about the too high safety look that they were throwing. Some passes tonight. That that pass, I actually said when I called it, he's got Langdon Allen open. Yeah. And the safety was deep and yep. just run right up on the play. And then that's exactly what you were talking about, right? They kind of took that middle away from you. Yeah. They? So, the first half, they stuck with that too high. There, um, when we got Langdon deep, they went to a one-high look, kind of rolled down, trying to take away our run game. Um, and that's when they really opened up their pressing, kind of like last week on Langdon. Um, the first time he didn't get off the line very well, but then the second time he did made a great play, a couple great plays. Yeah, the uh, your guys' defensive backs showed again how good they are, yes. though, didn't they? I yes. Mean, when they tried to throw, you had a couple picks, and, yeah. and, and your safeties are really good. Yes, and that's without JT out there. I yeah. mean – we have. We feel like we have a pretty good uh, defensive backfield. Um, we'll see when we we see some teams that can really spread it out because we haven't. I mean, we haven't seen that too much yet. Um, but we feel pretty confident in those guys on the back end. And it, this was going to be a test. I think you knew coming in uh, that this was going to be a test of your defense, right? Because yes. they bring something to the table with their speed, meaning yeah. their quickness of how they get to the line of scrimmage it's just boom 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 at you all the time but your defensive or your linebackers and your defensive line was going to have more of a test tonight than they've had all year you knew that coming in yeah. and it didn't say Ethan Ladd or Lindsey May a whole lot in the first half but in the second half when you guys really shut them down those two really stepped it up yeah they did well the first half we tried to we tried not to cut um, up front and try to let those guys kind of play their gaps and it just wasn't working. We were kind of getting blown off the ball, and our backers, Ethan and Lindsey, weren't getting getting to where they needed to be. So then we made the adjustment. Coach Wilson made the adjustment to to cut submarine, and it opened up some holes for those guys to go make plays. Uh, Tegan actually mentioned that uh, you guys were cutting a little bit. It looked yep. like and causing piles, and, yep. and and allowed some guys to make some plays. So he did he did catch That's that. That's awesome. He Good he work, must, Tegan. He must have learned a little bit through the years. He must have. He must have learned a little have. bit through the years. But. Uh, great game for you guys i mean does playoff eligible really mean anything at this point i mean it's it's cool right it's nice yeah but, but can you let it mean anything right now no you know we knew um i mean we we knew we were getting in with five um these last two weeks were the the two two big weeks that we're kind of looking at um kind of see where we're at because both of these last two programs are very good not that the next three weeks aren't going to be difficult um but this is a good gauge of where we're at we saw a spread team and now we saw a double tight foot to foot team um and we're just trying to prepare every week every week get better um and we set ourselves up very well for the conference well conference is conference is the next thing right and that's then, the next check and then uh, the next check is playoffs win 3a 4a 2a 3a we'll take we're uh we're last week we were the last team in 4a on the project or on the IHSA website, and then there's some projections out there, and a couple of them have us going 3A with a couple bigger schools above us. Wherever we fall, we'll play. 
you know? Right. And that's that's kind of the way the playoff format works in IHSA, when you're that edge, whether it be 1A to 2A or 2A to 3A or 3A, or I mean, whatever, you, you take what you get and you play. Yep. You're just happy to be there, right? Exactly. It's and an it's, opportunity to play in an awesome at- atmosphere. So, well, Coach, congratulations on a big win. I know you got a long bus ride home. Well, yep. so I guess it's not too horrible. No, but we got – well, hopefully on the way home we don't. But we got behind some combines on the way over, so. Well, it's uh, – It's that you, time do you, have to, do you have to leave early? Do you, do you plan that stuff? Well, I do, do you, but, you know, I don't think I planned as well this week because <laughs> <laughs> we got here about 5.30, which is fine because uh, we don't take the field till 6.10, 6.15, but – well, I didn't get here till six, six ten. I six saw you over here yeah. setting up. Yeah, I, I was, was going to be up there, but they had a party, and then we couldn't shoot from very well from up there. So I just came down here and ended up being pretty decent. When it you was have, a shorter walk for me, so I'll take it. When you got John Burton on the camera, it's all good. Yeah, that's what. That's the thank key. you. I, I watch it every. I'll go home and watch it tonight. So, so well, coach, appreciate we appreciate. It. Get out of here. Yeah, thank we, you. Thanks for coming. Congratulations on a good win. Yeah. So, Coach Tanner Horrell talking to us for a few minutes here. We'll go through the rest of the stats. 10 for 12 for 153 yards with an interception for Duncan and one touchdown as well. Uh, Langdon Allen had four catches for 81 yards. Jones had two catches for three yards. And JT Jeter had three catches for 69 yards and a touchdown. The scoring looked like this. 8.56 mark of the first quarter. The Trojans got the lead. First time the Bombers trail all year as Aiden Frail took a 60-yard interception return back for a touchdown. The run failed to give him a 6-0 lead. Max Reiner took the next series and ran from four yards out for a touchdown with 7.09 to go in the first quarter to give the Bombers a 8-6 lead after he did the two-point conversion run. With 41.9 seconds left, the Trojans scored on an Aiden Frail three-yard run. He had the two-point conversion run. It was 14-8. With 9.35 to go in the second quarter, Reiner again from 16 yards out. He ran the two-point conversion in to give the Bombers a 16-14 lead, and they never trailed after that. Reiner again scored from two yards out with 3.08 remaining in the first half. He ran the two-point conversion in. It was 24-14. In the third quarter with 2.48 remaining, it was Reiner from 13 yards out. The run failed, and it was 30-14. In the fourth quarter, G- Duncan completed a 20-yard touchdown pass to J.T. Jeter with 7.18 to go in the fourth quarter, and then he passed again to Jeter for the two-point conversion. It was 38-14, and then uh, Hines completed a pass to Frail for five yards out, and the pass failed at 2.20 of the fourth quarter to make the final score 38-20. to Well, thanks for joining us now tonight as Arnold Brothers Heating and Cooling brought, to you, brought you Bombers football on TSSR Game Time Live presented by MDH. For Teg and Perry, for John Burton, who is ready to go home. He's been working all day, and he drove all the way up here to bail me out, so I appreciate that. I'm Dwayne Hewlett. Thanks for watching TSSR Game Time Live, presented by MDH. We'll watch uh, – who do we have next week? Uh, next week, I is believe we have Lewiston. It is Lewiston at Valley next Friday night, so we'll be there as well. So join us, and – we will be having a watch party for the Q&D Macomb volleyball game and West Prairie Southeastern volleyball game at Sports Corner at 124 on Wednesday night. Keep an eye out. I'm trying to get some things together to make that a little more fun for the folks who want to watch from home or from Sports Corner that night. Once again, thanks for joining us. 38-20, Bombers get a win at Elmwood High School as they ruin the homecoming for Elmwood Brimfield. We'll see you again very soon here on TSSR Game Time Live, presented by MDH.